Hi there. Hello. My name is Yochai. I am the creator of Cairn. And today I'm going to go over the entries to the Cairn Forests of Another Name Jam uh, that we did earlier this year. There are something like 38 entries or something, so um, I'll try to, you know, power through them and talk about each. Um, I did a lot of home printing, so any weirdnesses are entirely my own. First up, we have Sylvan Steel, which is a um, pamphlet adventure. Uh, it takes place in a legendary forest that um, legend says has a Cairn at the center, and the Cairn has the ability to restore the dead to life, or something along those lines. Um, it's pretty awesome. I love pamphlet adventures. Oh, I should mention it's by Ahimsa Kirp and um, has art by uh, a few different fairly popular artists in the OSR. The design itself is from uh, Luca Reitz, but the pamphlet design itself, I should say. And you can see the tile set that um, Nate Treme out there it's really great okay next is the welcome to wrongwood uh, pocket fold this is a um uh, horror adventure in that's like set in a sparse forest it has tables to generate uh, atmosphere and features and creatures and, um yeah i like pocket folds too so really awesome. Oh, <laughs> I'll get used to this as we go. Um, this is by uh, David Blandy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next is Priest King of Beaver Island. It's a, a pocket mod as opposed to a pocket fold. Um, it is by Substitute Adventure and uh, it is a system neutral pocket mod hex crawl loosely inspired by some little known tidbits of american history apparently there's a best best bestiary a bestiary a bestiary whatever a bestiary is coming out as well at some point um yeah it's pretty cool okay moving on Tainted Wield, a post-apocalyptic forest crawl. So this is from um, Zero Horror, uh, who you might know from the uh, NSR Discord and other places. Uh, he is also the creator of the Plarian Karen hack and um, uh, a number of other like, Italian translations, or I should say, he translates stuff from English to Italian, which is really cool. And I I don't remember if he's part of the Italian Translation Alliance or not. Anyway, uh, his real name is Roberto, but um, I think it's uh, Bischielli. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. Um, Tainted Wield is a post-apocalyptic forest crawl that's set in a small region of an undefined world. It's inspired by the works of Hayao Miyazaki. So, like Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind, that sort of thing. It's got some pretty awesome art and layout. Um... Some of this didn't come out well in my prints, but I'm guessing in real life it would look, uh, the, it, the color wouldn't be as offset or whatever. I don't know what the right word is. Anyhow, um, next is the Merry March in the Winter Wood. Um, I actually have information about this. Here we go. This is by Pell. Um, who also did the uh, Layer of the Lamb Cairn conversion, by the way. It is a um, snowy point crawl exploration adventure where the player characters search for something called the Moon Bell, uh, which is apparently worth great sums of gold. Yeah. Following that is Burke Reach Under Forest, which is a I guess you'd call this a, um, these are all, these aren't like pamphlet adventures. This is more of a, I guess you'd call it a booklet. 
This is from Slade Stolar, also known as Caplands Press, um, creator of the uh, Anna X sixty six into the uh, into the odd hack, and also uh, the indie hack, which is one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Anyhow, um, it is an underground adventure. Um, it involves vampires in large underground caverns. So. Following that is Forest of Masts, which is, um, where did I go? Where did I? Oh, there it is. Um, so this one I really like because it uses the, it actually is like a forest of a different name. Like, you know, it's literally where the forest is made out of shipwrecks, which is kind of awesome. Awesome idea. Uh, it is by Story Orc, uh, also known as uh, Twee Germ on the Discord, on the NSR Discord. Uh, it takes place over three days. The party pursues rumors of a treasure on a roaming island uh, made of shipwrecks. So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty uh, unique and original. It has different, different endings, NPCs. Page on Relics. And it just it's yet another excellent addition to the um, <laughs> quite popular uh, naval cairn universe, the expanded universe. Uh, next is Symb Symbolic Cities Fall of the Bones. Um, so this is a um, set of procedures for um, generating quests like uh, going in the Green Knight and um, the you know, those kind of, I don't know what the general term of it is. He, he mentions it, it's Creton de Troye. Yeah, Troye, Troye, yeah. Um, uh, it's one of the authors that inspired this work, but I think of Gawain and the Green Knight and um, other kind of uh, subversive quests that knights go on, I guess. I don't really know how to quickly describe that, but <laughs> um, it's got excellent layout and um, interesting procedures that actually do appear to result in the kind of quests and um, situations that you might get into if you were on a Green Knight style quest. So yeah, that's uh, again, it's Fall of the Bones. The Grail Cycle. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. All right. Fogheart, the Torso of the Giant King, a small setting and adventure by Luciano Correa, um, who's also known as uh, Antigona 404. And this is one of my favorite uh, Cairn-specific adventures that I've seen in pretty much every way. I mean, look at this. The art and the um, layout and the imagination is just fantastic. Um, and uh, it, I guess I'm trying to think of a way of quickly describing this. It is a the first installment in a series of modular adventures that revolve around the scattered remains of an ancient creature that once ruled over uh, a single forest location. He, there are six separate locations here, um, a bunch of different Myconid style NPCs slash monsters, and um, I mean, yeah, I think there's two two dungeons. Anyways, it's really great. Look at these relics. I believe there's an OSC version of this as well. Okay, uh, next is the Dreamer Swaddled in Reptiles. This is by um, M. They go by uh, M. I believe. Yep. And it is a work in progress. You can see it's quite beautiful, <laughs> despite that fact. Um, it's by, um, it's about a, uh, it's a point crawl that has a pocket realm beneath a lavender glass dome. It has um, a number of dreamlike encounters. And 
If you've seen M's work before, you'll recognize their incredible artistry. More my comments. Um, yeah. I think this is coming to like, you know, this will be one of those that gets printed in real life. Uh, next is the Riparian or, or Riparian Forest outside South Cole by Jason Wardell. <sighs> um, it is a low stakes crawl around a woodland temple. You can see it's got some Evelyn M art and um this hex tile i've seen before too oh more have land these tiles are i don't remember who the oh the the uh nope i don't know who the tiles are from i thought it was nate treme again but i'm not sure Next is Gespenfeld. And is this the one from Dan Sumption? Yes, it is. Peak Grove Press, Dan Sumption. Um, it's a pamphlet. <laughs> Another pamphlet, which, as you know, I'm a huge, huge fan. Um, It's a freeform adventure set in a ghostly forest sustained by an undead mycelium. The forest materializes for only one night per year, and uh, players must explore it before dawn to avoid becoming stuck there. And yet another clip pamphlet. This is Creatures and Curses of the Yamada by June Awatari. Um, it's, uh, my understanding is it was inspired by their visit to Japan, where the grandparents live, um, and, um, it's basically about, uh, three forest spirits based on Japanese folklore. So, good job. Okay. Following that is Beneath These Strange Trees, which is by, a Scribbled Maze, and it basically, it's, um, it's got it's full of tables for generating uh, places and encounters in the rootlands, which is um, this setting <laughs> here. Um, it's got a dice drop table for creating uh, an actual point crawl, which I really like. I think people need to do more dice drop tables. Um, and you can see it's got a ton of um, encounters, just a lot of them, um, with NPCs, monsters, etc. Also, Nausicaa of, of the Valley of the Wind. Very, very good inspiration. Okay. Fungal Forest. Um, so this is by Shamay, if I remember who. That's uh, Alon Salvhide, but I think they go by Shamay. Um, and this is uh, one of the, there's two or three different uh, entries from the uh, Cairn German community which is very cool. Um, and I didn't, yeah, I haven't gone over where everyone's from, but so far, so far we've had Italy, Chile, England, um, Germany. So that's pretty rad. Uh, I like seeing all these different countries, uh, you know, being involved in the community in general. Anyhow, um, as you can see, it is a, uh, setting with a small dungeon, a number of different points, like encounters, and um, it comes in this nifty little format, which is, again, I really like these kind of short adventures. I think they, I want to make my own so I can insert it into cans that I sell. That would be, that would be pretty cool. Um, anyhow, this one is uh, the first of three German submissions, I think. Um, next, this is from Carejo Negro, um, and it is a hack of uh, another supplement, um, the same author, for it's a collaborative walking setting and map, map making game. So you actually are, apparently you're supposed to walk while you're making this. Uh, but this is the version for Cairn, 
and um, it is uh, using a lot of the same art from the actual game, as you can see here. And there is a, the original style was 24XX, I think, was the, what the other, the original supplement was made for. And this, you can kind of still see that here, which I like. But yeah, um, continuing on. Okay, so here's the other German entry. This is Castle of the Spider Hobbs. It's kind of familiar, right? Um, this one is from um, Doc Astaroth. And it's an adventure site about a cosmic spider-worshipping goblinoid clan. <laughs> I think this is like a giant tree. Um, but yeah, you can see the same kind of the German Cairn style. Which they've, the German Deutsch team is pretty good about developing their own style, so you can see that. Aha! Next is Cares and Carnogs, uh, which is a zine series by uh, Matt Morris, also known as Mana Ramp and Matt. This is a just tiny little pamphlet. It's part of that Cares and Carnogs zine series, which you can get from um, Itch or from LFOSR store. Um, uh, it's a dungeon crawl through a ring of dolmens, and there's a barrow full of druids that are evil, and I guess they're like ecstatic or feverish or something. Okay. Tannic. This is a um, adventure about a couple of lost youths who, during a festival, disappear and the PCs have to go find them. It's by Amanda P. Um, Weird Wonder Dev, I think, is her other handle. Um, anyhow, I did some editing for it, um, along with Symbolic City. And, oh, she, like, she copied me. I forgot about that. And Caitlin, who knows why. Or Caitlin. I'm actually not sure how she pronounced her partner's name. But it's very cute. Um, this is released, this is going to have a professional release, and it also is going to be released for OSE, which is pretty cool. See, it's got dungeons, and a very nice mountain of skulls, because I could not find one for Amanda, that was <laughs> public domain. Um, it comes with both OSE and Karen's tap blocks, as I just said, and... Yeah, that's it. Again, this is my home printing of it. All right, next is the Traveler's Guide to the... A Traveler's Guide to the Echelon Forest. This is by David Lombardo, also known as Awkward Turtle. Um, basically, it's a toolkit for generating forest point crawls that come with features and weather and paths and elevation, it's points of interest, um, points between locations. So yeah, you create your own kind of weird ass forest with this thing. And you can see David's awesome little dungeon generator stuck in there, which I freaking love. You get this separately, by the way. Um, okay, moving forward. Now I made this booklet, so yeah. Zenio didn't want to. This is uh, Matthias H. Morais also known as Zenio, who does a lot of Karen stuff, made most of the monsters on the Karen website, actually. Um, and this is just a pretty straightforward dungeon. Um, yeah, I I chose this back cover, which I think um, he did, yeah, I don't know if he liked it as much as I did, but I think the art actually really works for it. Um, but yeah, it, it wasn't actually released as a booklet, so the layout and such is all, it's all just, I take responsibility. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's about a, a dungeon inside of a maze of wood. It's pretty cool. Okay, getting there, folks. And speaking of folks, this is another Zenio, um, although the design is by Tony Jaguar. Um, it's a uh, folk horror, so it's just one page per folk horror. little booklet. And next is Piedmont, Critters of Wood and Mountain by Jordan S. Um, so y this one is a bestiary, a bestiary, again with that word. Um, what's interesting about it is it's inspired by those fearsome creatures in the Lumberlands and those other kind of books, or Lumberwoods, I can't remember what it's called, but 
Um, it's inspired by those books from William T. Cox and Henry H. Tyron. Um, Trion, yep, that's the name. Um, so you'll, you'll probably have seen these illustrations elsewhere before, like the snake one. I remember Dungeon World had a supplement like that. And apparently some of the originals had some pretty racist stuff in them too, but this one does not, obviously. Um, but <laughs> if I recall, that was one of the one of the things about that old um, now public domain work. And uh, yeah, it's a nice little booklet. And I think it's going to have more later. Um, but yeah, it's like a weird Appalachian bestiary. Um, so yeah, Jordan or Lionheart Clan, I believe is the other handle. Okay, now this is a booklet that I made as well because there wasn't one released. Actually, most almost all of these I made the booklets, but this one I didn't really have a way of printing. So again, this format is all my responsibility. Um, Mandelbrook, it's a fractal forest foray. This is actually, I think, either the first or second submission. I don't remember. Um, but it's by Sean of Smith. And um, yeah, it's a depth crawl. You generate on the fly, I guess, as you're playing it, as opposed to in advance. Okay. Next is Forest Faragos. Faragos. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Forest Faragos. There we go. Whatever. Um, so this is, I was really excited about. Uh, because K-Tray, also blogging at D4 Caltrops, does incredible tables. I mean, just just amazing, amazing work. Um, i got to focus this since it's one of the bigger ones. And um, it is a half dozen random tables that pertain to forests, vignettes, happenstances, hindrances, and results for uh, hunting and, and foraging in the forest. Quite beautiful. Large. Next is Alf King, which is an English translation of a Danish um, uh, supplement for Karen. And the, um, I'm going to pull it up here in very inefficient fashion. It's um, by Lasse Borley, also known as Toxic Donkey Buck, but <laughs> who did the um, Karen Danish translation. And um, it's for generating emergent results, is my understanding. Mm -hmm. Cool. All righty. We only have about four left. Next is Four Coons Forest of Shadows by Robin Fjarim, who's um, Swedish and also responsible for the Salt Haven supplements, as well as a couple of Nave books, like, uh, it's, it's, what's it called? Um, Snow, ah, oh, damn it. Icy Temple at Glacier Peak, something like that. Anyways, he's done some Cairn stuff and some Nave stuff. Um, I printed the printer friendly version there's actually a graphic in the in the original um as you can see there's a crap ton of tables here it's a forest crawl which by the way amazing word forest crawl everyone needs to say forest crawl now it's a spirit infested wood that is actually a trap created by a board sorcerer i think so very good idea very inspirational i love it um next is the perpetual forest which is a mini hex crawl that has two dungeons Ooh. can see probably some stuff you've seen elsewhere before. Um, it's by uh, Renee Kramer and I just think it looks really nice. <laughs> I cannot 
find my notes for it, so I don't actually know how to quickly describe it. Silly. Oh, there it is. Uh, oh, it's just a hex crawl with two one page dungeons, new monsters, and relics. So I didn't do a very good job, anyways. Okay. The Terror Crow of Pipwick Church. It's another of these um, full page. Oh, this one's actually only one page, excuse me. Another one of these one page ones. It's a small adventure about an abandoned god uh, and, and their church and a growing danger. So there's kind of a clock for escalating incidents. You can see it here. Oh, and um, it's by Martin Orchard, who's also known as Pointless Monument or Endless Pug on the Discord. Next is The Forest Will Not Be Tamed by 72 Stations. It's um, 20 conditions that forest adventurers can experience in the forest. Okay, and last but not least, I did not actually print this out because it's like 88 pages and it's not finished. There's The Weft and the Weave, which is a forest adventure hex crawl by Andy White. Um, who's Australian and um, does incredible art and writing. Um, it is also, I think his supplement, his art supplement for this is called The Journal of the Mad Kuthos Taji. Um, it's, yeah, I'm not even going to try to describe it. <laughs> I think it's, it's funding right now, but um, yeah, I just wanted to show how awesome his art was, so I printed it out. Okay, and that's it. Those are all the entries. And before I leave, I also want to point out the Karen Adventures Guide by Adam Hensley because it's just awesome and you guys should check it out. It's not related in any way to the jam. It did come out right after. Well, a new version came out. Um, it's just full of procedures for Karen that you might want if the rules that it comes with aren't good enough like for you. Like dungeon turns and um, more... Uh, NPC reactions and yens, um, hex crawling rules and leveling rules, all kinds of fun stuff. So, oh, and there's vices in here too, which I'm totally stealing for future stuff. And that's it for now. Um, thank you for tuning in to my poorly executed review of the Karen Jam. I'm really happy that we did it. And also, look how beautiful the LFOs are, Karen booklet is it's just out of control how nice it is also comes with character sheets just so you guys know look at this look at this all right this has been fun bye